God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Be blessed as you listen. And I pray that God will help us in this church to challenge ourselves. Challenge all of the men that are here. Challenge us to the point that we begin to understand scriptures and understand responsibility and understand duties. Duty to our parents and duty to our children. And understand that we need to have that staying power. That regardless of what happens, regardless of all stress that you go through, stress and the things that happen in this world cannot break you, cannot break your spirit. Because they will only last for a moment. And I say many times that bad times and stressful times don't last. It don't last. It's only for a moment. If you hang in there long enough, you will overcome. But it takes training. It takes the word of God. It takes the Holy Spirit for a man or woman to stand up against the challenges of this life. And to maintain a good composure in the midst of it. And until we find ourselves in the, in the presence of God. And the grace of God upon our lives. We may not be able to handle all of these things. So I pray and my prayer is for us. Not only those of us who are here. Especially those of us who are of African origin. Whether you are African, you're born in Africa or you are born here. We have a problem in our community. Too many children are living at home without their fathers. Many of them living without their fathers. And the world and the church believes that the father is absolutely important to the welfare of the child. Absolutely important the welfare of the child. And that's why God created fathers. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to share with you very briefly before we pray and dismiss for today from the word of the Lord. In the book of Matthew. I'm going to be talking about Joseph today. Glory to God. I, I want to spend 15 minutes to go through this story and hopefully you get something. An uncommon father. His name is Joseph. The father of Jesus. The earthly father of Jesus. And Bible mo most often calls him the husband of Mary. Because Jesus, Jesus' his father is the Lord God Almighty. Now, when you go back to Genesis, listen to me, folks. When you go back to Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 24, that was even before man fell. Now, some of you probably don't know that Adam was created an adult. He was not a baby who grew up and became an adult. He was created an adult. Eve both of them, and the Lord said, go and multiply, replenish the entire earth. And now, chapter 2, you know, man had just been created, and made in the image of God. In verse 24, the Bible tells us that for this cause, a man, not a boy, praise the Lord, for this cause, a man shall live who? God bless you. First, shall live first, his father, and his mother. A man, it takes a lot to make a man. God made a man. It takes a lot to make a man. And not every male is a man. Bible distinguishes between children, youth, and a man. If Bible calls you a man, you have qualities characteristics that a child or a youth 
doesn't have. So just the fact that you're 30 years old, you're 40 years old, you're 50 years old, it doesn't qualify you to be a man in the biblical sense of it. So for this cause, a man shall leave his father. And the father makes the man. God created or made Adam in his own image, in his own likeness. And the father makes the man. The influence of the father makes the man. If you have sons, God bless you, you have a huge responsibility. To make a man out of your son. It's not, it's not by letting TV do it. It's not by letting society do it for you. It is you and my responsibility to make them. Somebody told me the other day, he said, when God gives you a child, he gives you a brand new hard drive. And you have to write on that hard drive. Whatever you write on it stays with them. How you speak to your wife. How you relate together. They learn these things over, over the years. How, how you are disciplined in financial management. How good you are in decision makings. How, how you handle stress and don't buckle under the pressure of it. They look at these things and these little nuggets build them. Into what God wants them to be. A man. In society. For this cause. A man. Shall leave his father. And now. If fatherhood. Was not important. God would not have mentioned it. Way back in Genesis. Before humanity even started. God had just created Adam. And Eve. And then God is talking about. Fatherhood right there and then. It is the plan of God to have fathers. Plan of God to have fathers. And it's a plan of God for the fathers to make men that we outlive them. We're not going to be here forever. But somebody had to carry the banner after we're not here. Somebody had to stand in our stead after we're not here. Praise the Lord. Again, I was talking to my sons. I said, they know they're young. And I said to them, someday I'm going to be old. And I can't do some of these things anymore. There are things that I used to be able to do, I can't do no more. I couldn't be playing soccer with you all yesterday. Uh, two years, three years ago, I could do. Praise Jesus. And Ephraim said to me, Daddy, when you're old, maybe I can be the pastor of the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. That is exactly what God wants us to begin to create in the memories of our children. To help them to understand what the plan of God is for your life and for them. The making of a man is the responsibility of the father. If you're here today, you're thinking of being absent from your children's life, you're on a dangerous path. It will demand your discipline. It will demand your effort. It will demand your money. It will demand everything that there is. And you have that responsibility to make a man out of these little kids that God has given to us. And then as we fast forward into the book of Matthew, the Old Testament, the Son of God was born, conceived by a virgin man. And I, and I was asking myself, said, why, why was it that after Mary, Mary was a virgin, Mary didn't need Joseph to have the baby. She was already pregnant by the Holy Spirit. But yet, God brought Joseph into her life. And when Joseph was about to leave, God said, go back and stay there. And I said, then God definitely understands and likes the idea of having the father in the life of a child. Because the son of God was already conceived in need of man. But yet God placed a man in his life. Because he knew that this boy was going to need an earthly father that would teach him earthly things. Cannot survive in this terrestrial world with celestial mindset. He needs an earthly father. 
He said, he said Joseph, you had to stay. He picked Joseph to represent heaven's order in the life of the Son of God. It shows how much God appreciates the man figure. Doesn't matter. Those of us who are women here, listen to me. Because I've seen women, mothers who tell their daughters, you know, don't, don't, don't let no man tell you what to do. Go to college, make a profession, have education, which is good, have all of those things. Get a good job so that no man can tell you what to do. You are teaching your daughter something that is completely against the word of God. And for whatever we do, God will hold us accountable. We cannot raise children in that fashion. And we have mothers who tell their sons the same thing. They tell them how bad their father is. How irresponsible he is. If you have an irresponsible, if your husband to you is irresponsible, why did you marry him? You should have looked for a responsible man before marrying this man. If your wife is to you an irresponsible woman, you should have married another man before you marry this one. You marry another woman before you marry this one. So, but when we say these things, we, we, we most times, if not all the time, do not calculate the impact on the children. What mindset they will have. And therefore you have women who grow up don't want to get married. Because their parents told them all oh, men are bad. Or the men in their lives, their father had lived recklessly. And so all they knew is this man who is now living right. And they're thinking that every man is going to be the same. Same with the boys. They look at marriage and see how tough it is. Yes, marriage is tough. They look at marriage and see how the players in it live their lives. And it influences them. They're scared to go in. My, our sons, one of them is eight years old, the other is six. I pray for them every time for their marriage life so that they have a good marriage. I desire that for them. That's my prayer for them. Because it makes you. At the end of the day, you're going to have children that are raised in an atmosphere and should be raised in an atmosphere of love, peace, tranquility, understanding. And children, go back again, look at the statistics. Children who grow up under that type of atmosphere are better candidates of society. They are more successful. They have better insight of life. They are more prepared for life. They handle things differently. They see things differently. And that is what society wants. And so God, looking at his son, said, you need, you need somebody in your life who is utterly, who teach you the things of this life. And so Joseph was chosen. And when you read the Bible, you, you probably see Joseph's name in dotted portions of scripture. Not so much was said about him. Not so much was written about him. And it's not recorded that Joseph made any statement in the Bible. There, there's, no, there's no gospel according to Saint Joseph. And yet he was the earthly father of Christ. It shows me a man who is not driven by selfishness. If he wanted to Rule the whole world, being the father of the Messiah, he would have. But yet, in his silence, he was a giant. So many things that you can learn from this man that's not written in books. But God chose him. And now, look at, look at what the Bible say about him. He said in verse 18, chapter 1 of Matthew, he said, Now the birth of Christ is on this wise, whereas his mother Mary was espoused or betrothed or engaged to Joseph. Now let's step back a little bit. Engaged to Joseph. You see, in those days, parents arranged marriage, the father of the child. Meets with the father of another child and say, we want, we want our children to marry. They did that in biblical days. And, and it's not far-fetched today. There's society that's still doing. 
There's nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong with it other than the fact that we've been so civilized that we don't trust the judgment of our parents anymore. And yet these are older people who understand more than we do. And children walk out of their parents and say, I don't care, Daddy, what you're saying. You know, this is your old school. This is our days. We, we are new school. Who made old school and new schools? What, what makes the man of the house who he is is the many years that he has, he has logged into his mileage and had been the patriarch of that home. And not only that he understands physical things, he understands spiritual things. He has a lot more experience than you do. You cannot discount the wise counsel of a godly man. Go read it in the Bible. From Abraham. How did Isaac get, get his wife? Abraham participated in that. His wise counsel could not be discounted. That's what fathers do. That's what fathers do. Father brings wise counsel. And we as fathers need to be involved in the life of our children. Not micromanaging them, but directing and guiding them to the place that God wants them to be. Look at Jacob. He understood everything about his children. The 12, children, 12 sons of Jacob. When he blessed them, he said everything just as it is to them. And all of those things happened later on in life to all of them. Because the Lord gave him insight. Nobody can speak about your child than you as a parent. And especially if you're a godly man. God gives you revelation. He floods you with revelation. He floods you with insight. Some of you sitting here today, you know what your children are going to become because the Lord gave it to you. And you guide them along those lines. You help them through it. Why, why do... Why do Children need parents if they can survive by themselves. That's why they are children. And you'll never, you'll never, you'll never grow older than your father. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not even older than my brothers, let alone my father. I have two very big brothers and they're much older than me. They can tell me what to do. And we're trained and we're brought up in a situation where you have absolute, absolute allegiance to your male, to your male siblings, and let alone your father. You, you just don't speak back to them because you live in a free society. And I've seen children who speak back to their parents. They speak back to their fathers. Do you know what spiritual situation you're putting yourself when you begin to, to speak evil to your father? And speak things that are bad to your father. Go back to scripture and look at what happened to kids who were totally unruly. I'm developing this uh, uh, a sermon that I will preach to us at some point. Uh, the covering of the father, the covering of the man. Some of them are going to talk about it. And, and, I, and I saw some children. They don't want to release the secret of that sermon. Yes, so you come back to church. Hey, Amen. When I'm ready to preach it. Those who cover the glory and, 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 and bring glory to their fathers. Those are children that God has given to us. God wants to use you and me to make men out of them. And God uses them, them meaning the fathers around us, to teach us good lessons in life. Because they've been there. They've done it. They understand it. There's a proverb in Nigeria that you may have new clothes. You know, some of you sitting here, you have like Ralph Laurel's, uh, Tommy and Hilfiger, and all of the new stuff, but you can never have rags, old, old ragged clothes. You know, you know the, 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 the very, very old ones. You can never have those as much as an old man. He may not be dressed like you, but when he is dressed, he dressed with glory. That is what I'm communicating to us today. That you cannot discount the wisdom, the gray hair of a father. And you uh, listen to this. You cannot also 
take for granted the prayer of a father. In those days in Israel, as it is today, the Jewish culture is that the, the father lays his right hand on his first sons and pray for them, just the first, and prays for them. There are occasions that he calls the first son through our community, all first sons, they lay hand, they pray for them, and go to the scripture, look at it. Every firstling, every firstling is of the Lord, is dedicated to God. Doesn't matter how you think about it, every firstling, your first child. You lay your hand in it, you commit him to the hand of God, you sanctify him, separate him for God, and the grace of God rests upon him. You know, you know the most prosperous group of people in the world today, they're the Jewish people. All of them. Go to New York. A lot of the skyscrapers in New York, the streets in New York, they're owned by the Jewish community, Jewish people. God has blessed them. And so this woman was exposed or espoused or however you want to say it or engaged. The word today is engaged. And, and now Joseph engaged to Mary and Mary and Joseph live apart. And I laugh a lot of time and it bothers my heart when I see people say, well, we are planning for marriage. Uh, myself and my boyfriend, we're planning to get married. I say, okay, that's good. Where does your boyfriend live? Oh, we own a home together. We own a house together. We live together. How do you live together? And, and then you plan marriage. You're married. What, do you want, what, what is it you want to do again? And our society encourages people to do it. They say, well, economy is bad. We have, to, we have to pull together. Then stay apart and pull together. You don't have to be together to pull together. And you find this in scripture. We turn scripture upside down. You never, never live together until you're married. Never put a boy or girl in your home and living together and having all of the acts that you should not be doing. And you say you're a Christian, you're a believer, you're not. You're a hypocrite if you do that. That's not scripture. If society says right, the Bible says wrong. And we need to teach our children to do that. You don't bring a girl into your home, live with him or live with her when you're not married. And there are Christian parents who just don't see anything wrong with it. Say, well, you know, in society, you know, he has to know her before he marry. Don't have to do that. Isaac didn't know Rebecca. But the Lord led him. The Lord arranged it. The Lord brought them together. When God brings you together, nothing can separate. Who, who knows better than, than you? God knows better than anybody here. Knows better than every parent here. He's our father. He's our heavenly father. If he has a plan for you, make sure the plan works for you. Say, so, well, I've done it. But you can, you can stop it today. You can confess your sin to the Lord and say, God help me and be willing to cooperate with God and live a life of sanctity. No sanctification is no longer preaching church today. Because we're afraid that folk will no longer come to church. You know who loses when you don't come? You, not God. God is already in heaven. He's not planning to go to another heaven. We are the folk who want to go to heaven. We must do whatever we need to do according to scripture to make it there. Because hell is a bad place. I was looking at it today. It said that bottomless pit. In other words, it has no bottom. You keep going and going and going. There's no bottom. Who wants to go into the bottomless pit? I don't want to be there. Hallelujah. You're quiet on me now. Amen. It's okay. This is what the scripture says. It says, and, and Joseph was exposed to them. And now look at it. Before they came together. In other words, they were not together. They were not together. They were engaged. They're together. Folks who are not even engaged, they live together. Boys and girls, they have, they, they're pregnant. They have, they, they have children when they're not married. And that's what is leading our society the way we are. There. And parents are fine with it. They live in your basement, you're fine with it. They live in your attic, you're fine with it. That is not the will of God. It is against the word of God. And because you participate in it, you're going to be questioned when you get to the throne of the Father. And Joseph, Joseph, the Bible said, was a just man. He was a righteous man. God had to pick him because God knew him that he would not disappoint heaven to be the guardian of the Son of God. And here the Bible says he was a righteous man. He was a just man. 
God is looking for just men and righteous men. Fathers who live righteously. Fathers who appreciate spirituality. Joseph was righteous. He's a just man. He said he was not willing to make her a public example after Joseph discovered that this woman that was engaged to him is now pregnant of the Holy Spirit. He didn't understand it. How that would have happened. But yet in those days the Jewish, regular Jewish people would have brought this girl out and they would have stoned this girl to death. Because she committed adultery. And, and now think about it. What would have happened to the son of God if Joseph had made this public? And that's where he displayed absolute maturity. Not only that he was a righteous man, he was a mature man. Tradition makes us to understand that Joseph was much older than Mary. And that is why after he was 12, you never heard anything about Joseph, the father of Jesus. He probably died after the, the story when they came back to the, to the temple to try to retrieve Jesus when Jesus stayed back after they left Jerusalem. The Bible says his parents came. Mary and Joseph came to find him. And he said to them, don't you know I must go about my father's business? After that, you don't hear about Joseph no more. Tradition say he probably died of natural causes after that. But before that moment, Joseph displayed absolute level of righteousness and maturity. Here, scripture say that he would not, he would not bring her out, somebody that he loved, planning to marry. The, the, the pressure of seeing his love now pregnant, he probably thinking got pregnant with another man, didn't, didn't break his will. Some of us would have taken a gun and, and, and just killed this woman and find the boyfriend and kill, and kill the boyfriend too. Whoever it was. But Joseph didn't do that. Joseph had to say, I said, man, when, you, when you're faced with situation in life, you learn to cuddle under the hand of the Almighty. We're not reactive. We're not reactionary people. We are responsive people. You don't react to every single event. You respond to them. And how you do that is stay under the, under the, the auspices of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit help you to understand. A man doesn't just go berserk and... and and angered over every little and everything that come your way. You don't do that. You let the Lord lead you. You let the Lord help you. Because the word that you speak out of your mouth. Whether to your spouse or to your children. Matters a lot. You may not understand it. But you carry such tremendous power. You are made in the image of God. In the likeness of God where you make. You have the authority of God in you. That's who you are. You are a powerful man. You are an anointed man. So when you speak, you speak with authority. You just don't say anything because you feel like saying it. You choose your word. You calculate them. And you speak as a wise man. Wise men don't just talk and talk and talk. Foolish people do that. A wise man calculate. A wise man speak with wisdom. Speaks with authority. I was listening to this man the other day, and, and some months ago it was, and, and he, said, he said in his home, as the father of his boys, he had grown up boys, he said he does not holler, he doesn't scream. He said sometimes he's in the living room and the wife comes to say, oh, this, this calls the name, the son is misbehaving. He said, all he needs to do is, while he's reading his newspaper or reading his Bible, is to say, my son, didn't I tell you not to do that? He said, that's all he needs to say. He said, and the son understands the voice of the father. And comes back to say, I'm sorry, daddy, that I did. He doesn't need to, to hell. He doesn't need to scream. That's the authority that God has placed in a man. 
But that authority cannot be fully actualized if we misuse it. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. We regulate what we do and how we do it under the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's what this man did. When he saw the, the situation, this was a very precarious situation. A tough situation for this man. Told all his friends, I'm going to be getting married to him. He told all his friends how good this woman is. His father was involved, mother involved. And now the woman comes with pregnancy. What's he going to do? And this man had to, had to do some inward search. And while he was doing that, the Holy Spirit appeared before him through the angel of God and said, this is right, Joseph. Don't walk away from it. Stay with it. And Joseph said, yes, sir. You, you think that Joseph would have gone to society and said, an angel spoke to me about this woman? No. Nobody's going to understand what he's saying. They think it's a fool. They think he's gone crazy. But he took it to heart because the Lord said. How did he know that the Lord said? Because he was a spiritual man. If you're sitting here today as a man in your home and you have lost your spiritual authority, you are in serious crisis. You are a priest to your home. The devil cannot come into your home except they bypass you. They have to go through you. They have to seek permission from you before they come into your household. If you grant them the permission, they will. By your way of life. By the things you do. By the things you say. If you open the door for them, they come in. We are talking about true fathers. A father who is willing to defend his home with his life. That's what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. A father who is willing to put his life on the line for his family. That's how our community was raised in the first place. We have metamorphosed into a society where there are no father. And we are raising a fatherless generation. And it is not right for the future of our society. Not right for the future of the church. And what I'm saying today is happening between church people and unbelievers. Just as you have 50% folk in the world divorcing their spouses, you have 50% of Christian people who marry before the Lord divorcing themselves without regard to the seeds that God has blessed them with and they are willing to satisfy their selfishness at the expense of their children, the children of God. It happens in both worlds. But we need to stem the tide by going back to scripture, all of us, and doing what God has called us to do. If you misplace your spiritual identity, you misplace the spiritual identity of your family. When the man is displaced, the family is replaced. And it's not the will of God for us. We have a role to play. You may not understand it because nobody probably taught us what, what level of responsibility we carry when we married and decided that we're going to raise a family. We have a huge responsibility on our shoulder that we must carry. And we must carry to finish line by the grace of God. And so this man, as, as he thought about it, the Holy Spirit appeared to him by an angel. And when you go back, read this, I don't have a lot of time to deal with this today. You see that there was sporadic appearance of the angel of God to this man called Joseph. If there was any man in scripture that had so much interaction with the angel of God, it was this man. The angel spoke to him several times, at least three times. And gave him direction. And each of those times... He obeyed what the angel of God said because he was righteous, because he was mature in the spirit, because he was a very spiritual man. And these three things will help you and me as we navigate the vicissitude of life and raise and teach our children how to do the same thing. And sometimes I'm baffled that the animal kingdom is more organized than the human kingdom. Every little part or little member of the animal kingdom learn from their parents. 
and grow up with the skills that their parents leave with them to sustain that species. Look at lions. The lions come. They stay with their mother and their father for a length of time to grow up and organize themselves into a formidable force that will take on the animal world and remain the king of the jungle. All of them, birds, they do the same thing. Ants do the same thing. Only we who are humans walk away from our homes because we are tired of it. We can't take it no more. Only us, we are so much in a hurry to achieve what nobody else has ever achieved at the expense of training our children. We are not present with them. And the fathers were not there. They are completely absent. And they're not ready to go. Because he inconveniences them. I hope that the Lord will give us understanding. That all of us, especially as Christian men, you have a huge role to play in the life of your family. You balance the pH of your family. The spiritual pH of your family. You as a man, you're the balancing figure. And your children need you to be there with them. To grow up and be good, responsible, reproducing member of the church and member of society. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. May God bless you in Jesus' name. So at this time, we will pray. And we're going to pray for all of those who are males. What did I say? Pray for those who are males. So that God will make them men. So that God will make them what? Men. It takes a father to make a man. And sometimes it takes a heavenly father to make a man. Some of us, we didn't have the opportunity like me to grow up with your father, your father to, to show you how life really is. But your heavenly father is there to help you. To help you to see, to give you revelation, to give you, to give you insight on how to do this. And some of you did. You have forgotten all of the good things that your daddy taught you. But you need to get them back. If you can't, you have God to cry to the day and say, God, I need you to teach me to be who you want me to be. Bow your head and just pray. Bow your head and just pray. We prayed for you all this morning. The women that prayed for you. We prayed for you at the service. But you need to pray for yourself. I need to pray for myself in the name of Jesus. That the glory of God will rest upon us. The power of God will rest upon us. In the name of Jesus. That we'll become whom God has created us to be. A formidable force in society. A force, a glue that keeps the family together. The male and the female member of the family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive insight. Receive wisdom. Receive understanding. You just don't open your mouth to say stuff. You speak under the wisdom and the authority of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's only God that can do that. And he will in the name of Jesus Christ. Call on him in the days of your trouble. He said he will answer you. He said he will show you great and wondrous things which you do not know. Hallelujah. Some of you here today, you are holding hurts against your own father. Your father disappointed you, you think. Your father did everything against you, you think. But I'm here today to tell you, you need to release him, to forgive him. And you need to, you need to understand what the scriptures say, that you, you, you honor your father and your mother. You honor them so that your days may be long on the earth. Release them out of your heart in the name of Jesus. Release them. You have a father. You have a heavenly father. He's prince of peace. He's king of kings. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Heavenly father, we thank you this morning. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank you for this atmosphere. Lord, we come in submission to your will today. And we pray, God, that the power of the Holy Spirit will rest upon us in a new way, in the name of Jesus Christ. That the grace of God will rest upon each and every one of us in a new way, in the name of Jesus. That our eyes will be open again. Our eyes will be open again. Our understanding will be open again, in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we give you the praise today. We give you the worship right now. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray for all the men. All of the men.
the here today I want you to rise up wherever you are in the name of jesus all of the male male children in the name of jesus rise up in the presence of god glory to god let us stand up in the presence of jehovah all of the women i want you to stretch your hand and begin to pray for the more begin to ask the power of god and the grace of god and the mercy of god upon all of us in the name of jesus that god will raise us up to be who god has called us to be in the mighty name of jesus stretch your hand to them right now begin to pray begin to declare on their lives in the name of jesus every single man in this place let the power of god hit them hard in a new way in the name of jesus christ let us stand in the gap for them right now let jehovah begin to actualize his plan for every single man in the name of jesus christ hallelujah like we pray today they will be the held and not the tail in jesus name they'll be first and not last they will not go under they will go upward they will not go backward they will go forward in the name of jesus let the power of god rest upon them in jesus name righteousness will rule in their heart in the name of jesus holiness will be their portion in jesus name they'll be spiritual a priest in the presence of god a priest in their home in the name of jesus they'll be leaders in their home and leaders in society in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will give them the heart to be mature in everything. Maturity will be their portion in Jesus' mighty name. Pray that the hand of God will rest upon each and every one of us today. The hand of God will rest upon us. We'll be an uncommon father in our society, in our home, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, begin to pray, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. We are almost done. Open your mouth, begin to declare, uncommon father shall be raised in this house. Oh, come on, fathers shall be raised in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fathers who have been groomed in the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to pray for them. Let the good hand of God rest upon them. Let the grace of God be sufficient for them to all things. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will hear the voice of the Lord from behind saying, This is the way walking in it. In the name of Jesus. God will lift them up. God will raise them up. In the mighty name of Jesus. The grace of God will rest upon each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Like Joseph, we will do the will of God. When the Father speaks, we say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. For oh, one minute of prayer. Come on, pray. We are almost done. Hallelujah. We are almost done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let the glory of God rest upon each and every one of us. Let the glory of God rest upon each and every one of us. Empower us with your grace and power. In the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit change us. Change our mentality. Change our insight into life. In the name of Jesus. Bring us to the place that you want us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us not be absent in the life of our children. In the name of Jesus. Give us the grace to raise up our children in the way of the Lord. So that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes into the secret of this life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless every man in this place. Make them men indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your glory fill our life. Let your glory fill our home. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. What you have given to us and not fail. In the name of Jesus. The home you've given to us and not fail. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we bless your name right now. Come on, help me give God praise. Help me give God praise. Help me give him praise. Help me give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. Please be seated for a minute. The Lord bless you. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.jciskin.org. 
You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for 9.30 a.m. intercessory prayer and 10 a.m. services, or on Wednesdays for 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. We are located at 396 Vesey Street, off of Branch Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is King, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.